Um, this video will provide a brief description of electrical conductors and electrical insulators. A conductor can be defined as an object uh, or the type of material that allows the flow of a charge in more than in one or more directions. So the first thing it allows the flow of a charge. This is an important point. Okay. So they allow, they facilitate, they make it easy for a charge to flow through them. How? Conductors have free electrons, which allows the flow of charges easily. On the surface of the conductor, there are free electrons. Those free electrons help in the conductivity or in the flow of electric charges. Examples of conductors are the power cables. The inside of the power cables is usually copper, which is a good conductor. Most metals are conductors, but they differ uh, with respect to the rate at which they allow the flow of charges. So some of them are considered to be good conductors and others are considered to be bad or poor conductors. So examples of conductors, copper, iron, aluminum, tungsten, most metals. For insulator. An insulator is a non-conducting, it does not conduct with a few mobile charges or we can say they do not have free electrons or they are very poor in free electrons which prohibits or makes the transfer of charges harder like plastic, rubber, dry wood. Now, if we consider the power cable that we mentioned when we were, when we were discussing the conductors, the inside is copper, but the outside, we always see that the power cable or the connection wires are coated with plastic, which is an insulator. So while the copper or the inside of the cable conducts electricity, the outside, which is the plastic cover or the coating, plays a safety role for us so that it does not allow the flow of a charge from the copper wire to our hands to keep us safe. So different applications for insulators and this is one of them. Separation of the charges. We will go through this in more details later, but for now, separation of charges is a process that might result in creating poles. In this case, the object is said to be polarized. So let's take a simple example. If I have an object there and this object has positive and negative charges. Okay. And then I wrote a positively charged object next to it. What happens is the following. We will, this one, as it is brought close to the object, it will repel the positive charge and attract the negative charge. So this will be negative and this will be positive. So this is called polarization or forming poles. The other case is charging objects, like when you rub objects against each other. So when you rub the balloon against your hair, Okay, so let's say this is the hair and this is the balloon. Okay, so when you bring it and you rub the balloon against the hair, the balloon will become negatively charged and your hair will become positively charged. So you also separated the charges from each other.